40 hertz binaural beats have been shown in a number of peer-reviewed studies to increase focus and concentration. And if you'd like to access 40 hertz binaural beats in order to improve your focus and concentration, you can do that. You can actually get it at zero cost. You can go into the App Store, for instance, the Apple App Store. Uh, this is also available for Android phone. There's an app called Brainwave, and you can go there, you can dial in 40 hertz, and it'll play these binaural beats. It's been shown in multiple quality peer-reviewed studies that playing a pattern of sound waves to one ear, do 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 do, and the other ear, which is slightly offset in frequency, meaning not quite the same frequency, so more like do 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 do, that that combination of frequencies played to the different ears actually get integrated within deep brain centers and can increase focus and concentration in part by increasing levels of the neurochemical dopamine and acetylcholine, which we talked about a little bit earlier in this arrow model of focus. So we'll provide a link to that app. I don't have any relationship to that app, I should mention, uh, but it's an excellent one. It's one that I've used for many years. There are also additional functions within the app, such as for sleep and for other things, but the 40 Hertz 40HZ is the way it reads out. 40 Hertz stimulation has been shown to improve focus and concentration. Here is my recommendation in the way that I use it. I would not use 40 Hertz binaural beats every time I'm doing a bout of work. What I tend to do is use it for about five minutes prior to that work and then turn it off and then do the work. And I'll talk about other tools to use during that work, whether or not it's reading or math or even just emailing or something where I require a bunch of focus for a while. However, there are times in which I'm in an area or I'm in a state of mind where I'm feeling very distractible and then I'll keep the 40 hertz binaural beats on the entire time I'm doing that bout of cognitive work. I'll also sometimes use the 40 hertz binaural beats prior to a workout, in particular weight workouts where I really wanna be able to focus on and contract specific muscles. So it's a very useful tool, again, supported by quality peer reviewed science, zero cost available out there, not just in the Brainwave app, but in multiple apps. I think many of you will benefit from it. Some of you might not experience it immediately as a total dropping into a tunnel of focus in the same way that you might with, say, uh, the sorts of neurochemicals that we'll talk about later, like alpha GPC and some of these other things that change neurochemicals directly. But nonetheless, 40 hertz binaural beats are a very powerful tool. Again, zero cost, non-pharmacologic tool that tap into your own endogenous, meaning within you or exists within you physiology in order to increase acetylcholine and some other neurochemicals. And they have been shown to work quite well. So to make this very simple or as simple as I can for you, being fasted is great for focus and concentration provided you're not thinking about food the entire time. And being fed is terrific for focus and concentration, actually can improve neuronal function provided that you didn't eat too much food. So one way to manage this is if you're going to have a lunch to make sure that you don't stuff yourself at lunch, that you're not overeating and to not get quite so full that you push your nervous system into this parasympathetic mode and make it hard to focus in the afternoon. I know a lot of people experience a dip or even a crash in energy in the afternoon that make it really hard to focus. For that reason, I'll just remind people of a tool I've talked about many times before, which is based on the biology of adenosine and caffeine, et cetera, which is to delay your first caffeine intake to 90 to 120 minutes after waking up. I know that can be painful for certain people. I violate that rule when I'm working out very early in the morning. I'll drink my caffeine before my workout, which often occurs within you know 30 to 60 minutes of waking. But in general, unless I'm working out very early, I will ingest my caffeine 90 to 120 minutes after I wake up. So again, I want to emphasize that if you hear somebody out there say, being fasted is optimal for focus and concentration, well, that is true in one context and perhaps ideal for a certain part of the day. And other people will say, no, you know, neurons run on glucose. You need glucose in your bloodstream in order to get those neurons to be tuned. That is to respond with electrical activity in the optimal way when you're reading something or when you're trying to perform exercise. Well, that's also true. And of course, you can incorporate both. I, in fact, as I just described, incorporate both fasted states and fed states in order to optimize my concentration and focus. This may come as surprising because you, like many people think, gosh, stress really diminishes cognitive performance, but that's absolutely wrong. Stress improves cognitive performance. Now, of course, there are other ways to increase stress levels and to do that in healthy ways to improve concentration and performance. And one of the best ways to do that, because it's so sure fire and it's generally safe, provided you do it safely, is deliberate cold exposure. This is something I've talked about on the podcast before, but deliberate cold exposure can be achieved by getting into a cold shower for one to five minutes 
Right? If you're not used to it, you probably want to start with one minute uh, or you can get into an ice bath. And nowadays there are a number of different commercial sources of circulating cold water. Or if you have access to a body of cold water, like a lake or a pool or an ocean, we know that getting into cold water or under cold water greatly increases epinephrine levels and dopamine levels in the brain and blood. There's a beautiful study that was published in the European Journal of Physiology that showed that the increases in dopamine are massive, you know, a, a near doubling or more of dopamine levels that are very long lasting for hours. And epinephrine and indeed cortisol levels are also increased and in ways that support not just immune system function because they do that, but and mood because it does that, but that can really improve concentration and focus. I touched on this a little bit in an episode about memory, that there's an age old practice, really dating back to medieval times of putting people into cold water right after they learn something in order to spike, to increase their epinephrine as a way to consolidate those memories. For sake of today's discussion, if you're interested in ways to improve focus and concentration, you need to increase your epinephrine, your adrenaline levels. Cold water exposure is one of the most efficient ways to do that. This is not a biohack. Uh, I don't like the word hack. Uh, I know it's commonly used, but a hack is something where you're using one thing for a different purpose than it was originally intended for. And here I'm not referring to the shower or the cold bath. I'm referring to epinephrine. Epinephrine is a neurochemical that will place your vision into more of a tunnel mode, which will allow you to focus on cognitive work or physical work in a more specific way. You're not going to be as distractible. And it's very easy to achieve by getting into a cold shower or a cold body of water for a brief period of time. People always ask how long to get under or into cold water and how cold to make it. Here's the thing. It should be uncomfortably cold, but safe to stay in for one to five minutes. Okay, so uncomfortably cold that you really want to get out, but safe to stay and not so cold that it's going to give you a heart attack and not so warm that it's comfortable that it doesn't create that adrenaline release. Cold water exposure, I should say deliberate cold water or non-deliberate cold water exposure, reliably increases epinephrine levels. It is incredibly useful as a tool for this. And it is in fact zero cost or even negative zero cost. How could it be negative zero cost? Well, you can certainly save on your heating bill by taking a cold shower. So that's one way. And for those of you that have access to devices or locations where you can get into cold water, you can submerge. Well, then that can work. For those of you that don't, maybe you take a cold bath, you get in up to your neck. That's going to be most efficient. For those of you that can't do that, you'll get under a cold shower. Again, it should be uncomfortably cold to the point where you want to get out, but that you can safely stay in for one to five minutes. How long should you do it before a work bout? Well, if you get into really cold water, it's uncomfortably cold and get out after about three minutes, you're probably good to go dry off and get to work. Some of you might think this is a little bit silly as a tool for focus and concentration, but if you look at the data on epinephrine and how powerfully it can increase focus, I think you'd be very impressed. I mean, it certainly can increase one's ability to attend to specific visual stimuli. So for reading or math work, et cetera, it's going to be very useful. Now, of course, you don't want to make it so cold that you're shivering and chattering the whole time. And of course you could, if you like, combine this with 40 Hertz binaural beats. There's no reason why you couldn't combine the two protocols. But the point here is that a lot of people would love to, and I think ought to leverage the health promoting and powerful effects of increasing epinephrine on focus and concentration and running out and getting stressed by a life event or getting into an argument or something like that simply as a way to increase focus and concentration doesn't seem that adaptive to me. So deliberate cold exposure is a straightforward way to do that. It doesn't involve anyone else. I suppose you could do it with somebody else, but it doesn't require anyone else. And again, there are zero low and even negative cost ways to approach that.